Hello, this is Mark from Productive Computing. Thanks for joining me on this video. Today we're talking about encrypting and decrypting data in a field for FileMaker from the Claris platform. If you didn't already do so, check out part one. I'll put a link here for that. Part one is really where I show you how to do this. This part, part two, is all about some of the gotchas, some of the things to really be careful on as a developer. You could really step over your own toes and really get into trouble if you don't implement this correctly. So what I'd like to do is just take a few minutes and show you some best practices around the idea of encrypting and decrypting field level data here for FileMaker. So let's dig in. So for today's demo, we're going to look at a form view here in a documents module located inside a core CRM Pro application that we built here in FileMaker that we sell here at Productive Computing. I've got a container field containing a California sample ID. I also have two buttons, an encrypt button and a decrypt button. Let's take a quick look at the scripts associated with those buttons so you can get a lay of the land here. First, for my encrypt button, we prompt the user to enter an encryption password and we store that password in a variable called dollar password. Then based on how the user chooses, whether they hit cancel, we'll exit. If they don't hit cancel and they push okay, it'll continue. And then we target the container field itself. So we're actually encrypting itself with the same data. In other words, if I look here at this calculated result, this function that we're using is called crypt encrypt. And we're targeting or using the actual container data and binding that with the password from the variable that we stored a moment ago up in the show custom dialog option script step. So we're encrypting the same container and let's just take a look at that now. I'll click encrypt, put in the password one, two, three, and now we have encrypted data. I also have a decrypt script, which essentially does the same thing in reverse prompts the user, asks for a key or a password, targets the container itself, and decrypts it using the crypt decrypt option. Okay, so now let's go look at that by decrypting this encrypted data. One, two, three. And just like that, we have our California ID back in business, decrypted. All right, let's take a close look at one of the nuances. What if I were to encrypt this multiple times? So let's encrypt the picture here with a password of 123. We have our encrypted data. Then I'll encrypt it a second time with a password of 123. I have our encrypted data. And then I'll encrypt it a third time with the password of 123. So I've encrypted this three times. Now this is not necessarily desired behavior. This is not necessarily what you would program in your system, but I'm here to show you what happens. So if I decrypt it and go 123, it doesn't decrypt. If I do it again, still don't see a picture, and a third time, and I actually can reverse this all the way back to the original, which is interesting, impressive, yet not necessarily desirable that you want to get into this type of scenario because you may never know how many times the person encrypted it, and you may never have good or reliable results. So it's absolutely not the way to go. Just because you can do it doesn't mean you should. But that's the way it works with Crypt Encrypt. Now let's just twist this story just ever so slightly by using the other encrypt option that we have, which is called Crypt Encrypt Base 64, which essentially returns a text string versus a binary object, which we saw in the first example. So let's do that, and I'll do the same over here on the unencrypt, or the decrypt rather. Okay. Now we've got that programmed. So this time when we encrypt it, our result in the container field will be a text string. Okay, if I decrypt that, one, two, three, no problem. But if I encrypt this once and I encrypt it again, now watch the text change, which you'd expect. If I decrypt this now, I get something a bit different. I get untitled.dat. If I decrypt it a second time, I get a question mark. So at this point, I've actually ruined the data. I've destroyed the data and there's no way to get it back because the crypt encrypt base 64 function doesn't work exactly the same way as the crypt encrypt function, the one you first saw. So again, this really emphasizes the point that you definitely don't want to get the user into this situation. This is bad news for the user and bad news for you, the developer, 
if, uh, if you've let the user get to this point. So let's talk about some easy ways to get around this. I'm not saying that anything that I show you here today is 100% foolproof because when it comes to security, you really have to consider all the aspects, uh, not just a few isolated aspects. But for today's demo, we're talking about just the aspects of how this encrypt decrypt works and some ways to better protect it. Okay, so why don't we introduce another field to store the fact that this is encrypted or not? So let's call it an encryption flag and make that a number field. And we'll present that field on the layout. There we go. So what I want to have happen now is that when I encrypt something here, I'll put a flag of one. This will allow us to do a couple of important things, which you'll see here in a minute. So let's go wire this into our scripts. And now after we do the first encryption, we want to set the field encryption flag to the value of one. Like so. That way we'll know from that point forward that this record and that field has been encrypted because it has a one indicating such. Now, likewise, if I decrypt it, I want to clear any one that might be there. So if this is successful here on the decryption, we'll set the same encryption flag field. So I think I'll just set it to blank. Now let's get our picture back in here. I'll just quickly insert it again. There we go. And now this time I'll encrypt it. And now we have a one here indicating that it's encrypted, which is perfect. Now if I decrypt it, now the one disappears. Now how can we use this one to our advantage? Well, first, we probably want to not encrypt anything a second time, which is really what I've been talking about for the last several minutes. So first, let's determine if that field is set to one or not. Because if it is set to one, like so, we'll probably want to bring up another dialog box that says already encrypted with an OK button. No way to really cancel that. And if that's the case, why not exit the script? OK, and then we'll put an else and proceed forward. So let's just put that to the test. So first we'll encrypt it. One, two, three. Now our flag is there and the user goes to encrypt it again somehow. It says already encrypted. So it did exit even though it brought up my show dialog. So on that particular dialog, we'll want to make sure we're not offering any kind of input field values. Little faux pas on my part there. All right, try that again. One, two, three, and then encrypt, already encrypted, push OK, nothing you can do. All right. Now, what else could we do to protect the user from encrypting it twice? Maybe the button itself disappears using the hide condition, hide object when the encryption flag is any value of true. In this case, a one is true, so all I need to do is put the field on there. And since it's a number field, it'll evaluate properly. If the encryption flag is one, hide the button altogether. So now the user can't even find the ability to encrypt because the button isn't there. An another great protection mechanism. Now we'll decrypt it. Okay. Now you might be asking yourself, is there any function that can determine if the field is encrypted so that I don't have to store it in my own flag? And the answer is, as of this recording, no. I don't believe there's any way to identify if a particular field is encrypted at least not as a function. Obviously, there's ways you can identify what's in the container, and perhaps in that way you could reverse engineer whether it's encrypted or not by finding some key elements in the data. But there's no actual function called get encryption field status. Now, there is a function that you might be thinking about. So if we go to the data viewer and look up any function for encrypt, you'll see, ah, there's get encryption state. Maybe I can use that. So I'll get a help on that. And you'll quickly realize that this has nothing to do with a field being encrypted, but rather the entire file being encrypted or not, which is a different type of encryption not covered in this particular video. But that's encryption against the entire file. 
So that can't be used. Therefore, because we don't have functions to identify this, I'm creating my own flag and identifying it that way. I'm using the encryption flag as a number with a Boolean value of one or blank to help identify and protect this field against double encryption. Now, if you want to explore this topic further and really understand all the nuances, not just the crypt encrypt function, but some of the other nuances of how best to lay out the security when it comes to encryption at the field level, then you might want to check out this FileMaker blog called FileMaker Encryption. It's from the company called Codence. And they explain a lot of these nuances along with many other aspects of what you might want to consider when implementing this. So I, I read through this and I thought there was a lot of good considerations and limitations that every developer should be aware of. Plus, this is just good overall common sense when it comes to security. They also have a demo file that you can use if you provide some information. In addition, there's a great article from Stephen Blackwell. I think he co-wrote it with Wim DeCourt. If you download that file, and I'll put a link in the description below this video, if you take a look at that, this actually covers many aspects of FileMaker security, not just encrypt, decrypt, but many other aspects as well. This is a fantastic read, even though it was created back in the FileMaker 16 days, uh, most, if not all of it, is pertinent and relevant today. So definitely recommend that as a read through for the best tips and best practices when it comes to security in the world of FileMaker on this platform. Feel free to leave a comment below and we'll do our best to get back to you on that. If this is the kind of content that resonates with you, we welcome you to subscribe to the channel for more just like it. Thanks for watching.